Our next guest was a man who made a lot of shots from uh, that that uh, area of the court, the long two, not to mention threes. He's a BYU TV analyst, the all-time leading scorer in BYU history. Tyler Hawes on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Tyler, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? We're we're fired up. It's a game day. We're talking uh, opt outs, WCC tournament, you, show <laughs> or units, all that. It's just wild. So let's address uh, the the West Coast Conference tournament first. Then we'll preview Pepperdine with you. So Mark Few bringing up, you know, let's figure out what's best for the league. And if you're talking what's best for the league as your number one value, it's probably getting a third team in. So uh, it'd be weird if Gonzaga and BYU opted out, right? I think so. Uh, I mean, it, it has been such a weird year. Um, I mean, games being canceled, games being moved around. Um, but, you know, you look at it from Gonzaga's perspective and, you know, re- there's a lot of talk around the country with, you know, conference tournaments being canceled. If you're Gonzaga, it's, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But I think there's there's a lot of teams around the country that are going to benefit from playing a conference tournament. So I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm always for playing games. Let, let's let's play games. Let's get out there. Like I I want BYU to have another crack at Gonzaga. I don't I don't want them pulling out of anything. Well, and look, that's what everybody wants to do. You want to play games, like you said. But that's one of the uncertainties about this entire season is how many games are you going to get to play? Even if you have a game scheduled, will it happen? I mean, we've seen that the BYU's game on Saturday has already been postponed. I mean, when you think about that situation and the unknown right now, you know, is the conference tournament going to happen? Is it not? I mean, obviously right now it's on. How, how frustrating, I mean, put yourself in one of these players' shoes. How frustrating would this be on a day-to-day basis of just not knowing anything? Yeah, uncertainty can be be a killer for sure. I mean, if you get caught up in all of the different storylines and and the what if scenarios out there, it can um, it can be a really tough mental challenge. Uh, I I think BYU, you know, overall ac- across the board, across their whole athletic program, I mean, has done a great job of managing all those things. And um, BYU, from the very beginning of this COVID stuff, it's it's always been about how can we get more games, how can we continue to keep playing, and you know, sitting down with with coach before the season. Um, he, he talked about all this uncertainty and one of, one of the things that he talked about being his greatest challenge was not letting it, not letting COVID be an excuse for, for anything that, that happens and be, being able to take every game and every day, just one, one step and one day at a time. Um, and, and always trying to play more games and, and it's worked, worked out well for BYU so far. Yeah, just uh, you know, a couple games uh, postponed, getting rescheduled. TBD on when San Francisco gets rescheduled from Saturday. But uh, uh, regarding the excuse, or, or I guess an asterisk, if Gonzaga did opt out of the WCC tournament, would you? W- you'd still want BYU to play. It sounds like because I guess they could h- still help their seating. I guess they could hurt their seating as well. Uh, mm-hmm. But BYU could win the WCC tournament and a conference tournament for the first time in 20 years. It's been a long time. It's been a tough journey to overcome UNLV and San Diego State in uh, Vegas, and then it's obviously tough to beat Gonzaga at the Gonzaga Invitational. So what do you think of that scenario if Gonzaga did opt out of the WCC tournament? The BYU still plays because something's on the line. Yep, I I think so. I I think BYU for sure still plays. BYU can benefit from from getting a few more wins, I think, and and can help their seeding and and, and you guys know, in, in the NCAA tournament, um, so much of advancing is uh, who you get matched up with and, and where you're seated. And so I think, I think if BYU can play, they're, they're going to play. Let's talk about this team specifically. The record speaks for itself. I mean, we, we've seen what this team is capable of, and they're certainly trending in a very positive direction but philosophically, when you look at a team, and we'll obviously talk about, about this BYU team specifically, but what, do you, what would you prefer to have in terms of a team? Do you want to have a team that's based around a go-to guy, or do you like to have a, a team of the guys where anybody at any time can, can be the one that steps up for you? What, what do you think is better for the program and for ultimately winning? 
Yeah, <clears throat> I think I think moving forward, um, the rest of this year, I mean, you got to have the, the most dangerous team have a team of the guys. Like there, there's multiple weapons that that can hurt you, and and BYU has definitely been trending towards um, guys stepping up and and taking on bigger roles. And I, I like that scenario a lot better than having having one or two guys, but. Um, part of me still thinks that, you know, we, we kind of have a mix of both. Like, I, I mean, I would say, I would say AB is our guy. If, if we're looking toward, if we're looking for a guy to hit a big shot at the end of the game, AB is our guy. And, um, but I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of other guys that would take that shot as well. I mean, BA has been playing awesome. Trevin Nell, the last few games has been really tough. Um, Matt Harms has been um, really tough inside and a huge presence. And so um, I like that we have our, our main leader with all the experience and, and kind of has been the, um, you know, the, the, the steady guy all year. Um, but then you've got a, a full team of guys that are, are dangerous and, and ready, to, ready to step in and compete. Trevor Nell earlier this week on the show told us that six players, including himself, had been fitted for mouthpieces. You played with a mouthpiece, didn't you? To avoid what happened to Alex I Barcelo? I did, yeah. Yeah, I've had my fair share of uh, facial injuries and dental work done. So, Would you wear a game, mouthpiece yeah. as big as the one that uh, uh, Matthew Della Vadova wore? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh, man. Del Vadova, he used to keep that thing in his sock half the game. Oh. You never know. You never knew whether it was in his mouth or in his sock. It was gross. Oh, listen. And I used to think this. Now I'm going to change my opinion because six BYU guys are going to wear mouthpieces perhaps today. But I always thought if dude shows up with a mouthpiece, I, I'm not sure I wanted that physical. Like, hey, this guy's going to, what's this guy doing? So have you had a, a chipped tooth or anything like Alex had before? Oh, yes. Yeah. My, my front four teeth are fake, man. I, I got hit. I got hit early on as I think a freshman in high school I had to have all this work done. Oh, wow. I, yeah. You so say you have four front for, teeth? I wore my front four teeth. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I've been hitting the nose. I, I, over in Poland, I, I took an elbow to the face and practice had to have surgery. Uh, it's just, I mean, my my wife and and my family always tell me, Ty, you you, you just lead with your head too often on, on everything <laughs> you're doing. Lead with and your I, heart. I only knew, I don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I only had I only had one speed when I played, and so it was all out or or, or nothing. So it's part of it. Uh, does that affect uh, breathing? Uh, how do you navigate that? As we, uh, uh, Trevin mentioned, we're gonna have uh, more guys on the guard line wearing the uh, mouthpiece. No, they they have really good mouthpieces nowadays. You can get one that's that's fitted and um, doesn't come out too often. Um, but yeah, I I wore one. I think my sophomore, junior, senior year, and then all over in Europe too. So I that that was part of my my pregame ritual. I had to make sure I had my 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 mouth guard in there. Okay, I'm remembering uh, your freshman year, 2010, in the Thomas and Mac TCU. Was it the game before? Or was it in that game you got like elbowed in the eye and you like made two free throws and you could barely see or something? I got poked in the eye. I on a fast break, dude just came right across my face. Felt like his his finger went all the way back in my head. But I had so he punctured my sinus wall. And what? And what happened that night? I'm I'm sitting there in the room. Jackson Emery was my roommate and went to blow my nose at night and literally air leaked out from my nose into my eye and blew up my eye. Oh my God. Like I, I was totally fine, but in literally in one second, my eye blew up like a balloon. It was the weirdest what? thing ever. The weirdest injury I've ever had. Was that against <laughs> TCU or was that the, remind me of the timeline there? It was against TCU yeah. in the quarterfinals. So, that happens in the game, and then you go to the free throw line. Don't you knock down two free throws or something with, like, one eye? Yeah. Yeah, I hit two free throws, and then, yeah, it came out. I, I could barely I, – I couldn't see anything. I, it was really scary, actually. Wow. Most of the vision um, in my eye was, was dark, and so slowly it, it came back, and then that whole thing happened that night. 
got nicknamed the the tie clops though that, <laughs> that was pretty cool okay let's finish with this uh your thought on the matchup game two with pepperdine byu taking on uh, the waves here in a couple of hours yeah i'm i'm excited um you know just coming off the way they played last game uh it's it's really encouraging right i mean didn't shoot the ball well from three but still found a way to grind it out i thought they i thought byu matched um you know pepperdine's physicality so well inside and you know found a different way to win uh, i thought they did a great job on the defensive end of the floor byu is playing so well defensively stringing stops together playing as a team playing for each other it's They've got a lot of momentum right now, and you know, hopefully they they can bring that same fight. I think they're going to have to shoot the ball a lot better at Pepperdine. Um, you know, Pepperdine's not not going to have the same game that they had last game. So I, you know, but I expect BYU to to shoot the ball better as well. So I'm excited, Tyler. We we don't have time to get to it today, but the next time you're on the show, now that you're you're more around the building and you're you're the analyst on the countdown to tip off. We're going to need to to get your stories about what you've learned about Jerem Jordan since you've been spending much more time with him, and we're talking about all the embarrassing stuff. So that'll be the next time you come on. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if I can say some of that stuff on air. <laughs> I just want to hear more about the Cyclops later. Cyclops, <laughs> yeah. Plenty of stories like that for sure. It's probably the name of this show today, by the way. The Cyclops, yeah, for sure. Okay, Tyler, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's the Tyclops, Tyler Haas <laughs> on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline.